Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. For today's video, we'll be doing a VBOTS tutorial. In this VBOTS tutorial, we'll be writing a controller code to drive a differential drive robot in C++. If you're looking for a tutorial for other programming languages such as C and Python, look for links in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm starting here with a VBOTS world and a custom differential drive robot that was built in a previous video. I'll add a link to that video in the card on the top right corner or in the description below. You can also use another differential drive robot such as EPUC which is available in the VBOTS library. Now let's write a controller code in C++. To do this, go to the menu bar on the top and click on Wizards, New Robot Controller. VBOTS should give you a pop-up saying new controller creation. Click continue. Choose programming language. I'm choosing C++ and click continue. You can name your controller. And click continue. Make sure to select the open differential drive in text editor. Click done. This should open the VBOTS text editor on the right side. As you can see, this already includes some information for us. In general, when writing a VBOTS controller code or any code in robotics, you have three steps. One is to initialize all the variables. This includes sensors and actuators such as motors. Then you have your main controller code, which essentially drives your robot followed by an exit cleanup code. This generally includes deleting and relieving memory. If you've been coding in Python, you generally don't need to do this step as Python will do that for you. Inside your main controller loop, you have three parts. The first is to read sensor data. Second is to process that sensor data and make decisions such as driving the motor. In this particular VBOTS project, we are simply going to be working with motors. So we'll initialize our motors and then drive them in the main loop. In VBOTS, when you play your simulation, this initialization is done once and this while loop continues to run over and over again. And once you stop simulation, it exits the while loop, does the code cleanup and then closes the program. This while loop runs continuously for each time step. As you can see here, time step is defined. We will change this and use a continuous time step of 64 milliseconds. Make sure to change this to the new time step. Next, we'll define our motors. As you can see in the helpful information here, it already talks about how to do this using the get motor function. And as you can see, you will also need motor name. To do this, go to the VBOTS scene tree. Click on robot and expand it. Under children, look for hinge joint, device, rotational motor. As you can see, our motor is named motor1. You can look at the second hinge joint and under device, you can see the second rotational motor is called motor2. If you're using another differential drive robot such as EPUC, which is available in the VBOTS library, make sure to convert it to base node so you can look at the motor names. Alternatively, you can also go to the VBOTS website and look at the documentation to get the motor names. With that, let's go back to our VBOTS C++ controller code. We also need to include the VBOTS motor header file to use motors. We'll call our motor left motor.
and similarly will define the right motor. In VBOTS, you can drive a motor either by giving it position or velocity. We'll drive a motor by giving it velocity. To do this, we need to initialize the position to infinity and give an initial velocity of zero. So let's do that. We'll do this by using the set velocity and set position function. Make sure to keep saving your code in VBOTS. Next, let's give some velocity to our motor inside the while loop to drive it in the VBOTS simulation. Let's work with the max speed, which is 6.28. To do this, first define it as a global variable. Coming back to the while loop, let's set the velocity of both of our motors to max speed. Make sure to save your VBOTS controller code. As we are coding in C++, we need to build our code before being able to use it. Use the setting symbol to build your code. If you hover over it, you can also see it will say build the current project. And let's reset. Now an important thing to do in VBOTS is to give this controller to your robot. To do this, go back to the VBOTS scene tree and under your robot, look for an option called controller. Click on that and click on select. Next, look for your controller code, select it and click OK. And make sure to save your VBOTS world. Next, let's run the simulation by clicking on play. As you can see, I got a warning and this has happened to me a quite a few times. Just reset the world and try again. And if that doesn't work, then look at your controller code. As you can see, it's working and it drove forward. Next, let's look at how to drive a differential drive robot by giving different speeds to left motor and right motor. For a differential drive robot, there are two ways to turn your robot around. Either stop one wheel or slow it down and let the other wheel go at the same speed or turn the wheels around in different directions. So let's say you want to go left. You turn your left wheel backwards and you turn your right wheel forward. And in this way, your robot can take a left. Now let's give that a try. To do this, go back to your VBOTS controller code and change the speed for left and right motor. Let's try and give our left motor negative max speed and our right motor positive max speed. Once again, make sure to save your code and build it again. Let's reset our VBOTS world and click play to run the simulation. As you can see, the robot is turning in its own place. If I were to change this such that my right motor has max negative speed and my left motor has positive max speed, 
the robot will turn in the opposite direction in VBOT simulation. Let's give that a try. Click on the PlayBot to run the VBOT simulation. As you can see, the robot is now turning in the opposite direction. To get our robot to move forward and turn, we need to give different speeds to both of our motors. Let's pause and reset our VBOT's world and go back to the controller code. This time, let's give half of max speed to our left motor and full max speed to our right motor. Make sure to save your C++ code and build it again. Click on the play button to run your VBOT simulation. As you can see, the robot is now driving forward and turning. Similarly, if you want your robot to turn in the opposite direction, simply change the speeds. Not just that, by changing the value of speed, you can also get the robot to take a wider or a smaller turn. Let's give that a try. As you can see, the robot is now taking smaller turns. In this particular VBOTS project, we are giving it a constant speed in the while loop. This is why our robot is moving in the same pattern. If you'd like the robot to move by reacting to certain things or move in different direction based on time, you can make use of conditional statements and sensors. If you'd like me to do a tutorial on that, tell me about it in the comments below. If there's enough interest, I'll try to make a video on it soon. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.